definitely call myself the coyote kid. <laughs> I'm the second generation owner of the Clay Coyote. It started when I was 14 years old on a farm just north of where we're sitting right now in Hutchinson, Minnesota. My folks began it. It was their full-time jobs. I thought they were crazy. I was a teenager and we used to have a little pump house on our farm where people could come pick up a pot and it was on the honor system and they could leave us $10. And that's how we started. People would just drive down a gravel road and find some really amazing pottery and over the last 25 years we've gotten bigger and created a whole different line of pottery that you can cook with and my mom still works here with me today. Here at the Clay Coyote, we use a special type of clay called flameware. It expands and contracts at a different rate than normal pottery, so it can go on the stovetop or on the grill. It takes the heat. It's really unique. Only a handful of potters across the country have access to this kind of clay, and it's our specialty line. At the Clay Coyote, you walk in the front door and it's kind of a labyrinth because the first thing you experience is our gallery where we sell all the pieces that we make, like the pieces behind me and pieces from artists from all over the country. But there's a sign over the door to the studio that says, please come in. And we really want everybody to walk back there and see the potters at work. Every single day of the week, we have people throwing, trimming, glazing, firing. And then you know what else we do a ton of? We clean pots. Uh, it seems like the biggest job in pottery is washing pots. So there's a lot of cleaning dishes here. We have a great team here at the Clay Coyote. It's a family business. My mother still is our main glazer and she runs all of our kilns. We have six other potters who work with us and they are all trained in different styles and techniques. I'm, I'm much more on the front side of it, helping to work with customers. And I knew I was gonna have to bring a lot of artists to our region to become potters at the Clay Coyote. So we created an emerging artist program where young artists work here and they have a steady stream of income, but then they also have access to all of our resources. So it just helps the artists launch their personal line of pottery sooner. It was by chance and social media, actually. I saw a post from Morgan and Clay Coyote that there was an opening for a studio potter. You know, I've been doing pottery for a long time and I was looking for an opportunity to get better as a potter. So I felt like I owed it to myself to come down here and talk to Morgan. So I reached out to her and came down here and instantly within like, 30 minutes of uh, you know us talking. I think both of us knew that it was a really good opportunity and I wanted to take advantage of it and they wanted to have me. Pottery is process based. So usually the potters work in series or in a group. So Morgan will say, uh, this week we, we need 20 grill baskets, which is uh, pretty often because that's our number one seller. So on Mondays she'll, she'll say we need 20 grills and that's when my process starts. So with pottery you begin by throwing the piece and then you let it dry, you trim and shape the bottom, stamp it and attach the handles and things like that. So a typical day for me depends on what day of the week it is and where I am in that process. It's very therapeutic. I love, I love working with my hands. I love being able to perfect 
crafting and creating something that's, that's beautiful and functional. Our number one product at the Clay Coyote is the grill basket. No one else in the country makes one. It's, a, it's made out of our flameware clay. It, it weighs about three pounds. It has 44 holes in it. You put it on the grill and you throw all the vegetables you want in it. And there are many commercial grill baskets out there, but they're all metal. And metal notoriously um, conducts heat and therefore it burns your food. The clay actually spreads that heat out so that you don't get burned grilled vegetables. Most of our standard standard items we double box uh, to make sure that they're protected when they travel and uh, the fewer you know breakages that we have the less things we have to reship and uh, mm -hmm. you know fewer disappointed customers <laughs> as well so kind of have our system for each of the pots that we use um, you know you kind of we do uh, do our best to use you know recycled or environmentally friendly items. All the paper we use to wrap the pots are, uh, you know, from our local newspaper. That's recycled paper from them. All these peanuts here are uh, biodegradable ones as well. And then like the bubble wrap I used on here was from the package that we just got today. Over the last five years, we've made a lot of changes, but one of the best ones is really putting an emphasis on our website and our social media interactions. We ship out more products to people from coast to coast. When you come in here, you get to touch the pot, you get to see the potters working. So we really spend a lot of time figuring out how to translate that to the web so that people feel just as connected to us. We ship out the boxes and when they open it, there's Clay Coyote paper with our logo on it. There's a card that tells them how to use the pot. There's a story card that tells them about us. And then there's a bar of soap that smells like whatever they're gonna cook first in that piece. We wanna make sure we touch like all your senses the moment that you get to you know, have your first piece in your hands. And so you've got the touch and you've got the sight and you've got the crinkling so you can hear it, you know, and then we were like, well, how do we get smell? <laughs> so, so we worked with a local soap woman and she made us, you know, bread smells, coffee smells, basil for the pizza, charcoal for the grill, lemon for the tagine, you know, so it's the specific smell. When we moved to downtown Hutchinson, I brought a lot of the memories from the farm with us. The sign is made of the barn material from the farm. There's a sign out in the studio that is the original sign from that pump house where people just left $10 and took a mug back in 1994. There's a lot of nods to history around here. Ceramics is kind of ancient and even though we only started 30 years ago, there's a lot of there's a lot of history in this in this building. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Juline on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org. 
playing today's new music plus your favorite hits. 96.7 Cram, online at 96.7cram.com. <laughs>